Hey, this is Guy from New Plastic, and this is a quick tip on how to get realistic, fully procedural, subsurface scattering based green porcelain texture in Octane. You can get the SSS pack on my Gumroad with 36 materials, all procedural with models included. And you can support the channel on Patreon or on the YouTube membership, where you'll get this project file as well as many other things. Links to everything in the description. Shout out to Spencer Clark, Abhishek Singh, Lin, KV Davy, Tech You On, Just Hope Out, Yinning Gong, Elad, 3D Monkey Biz, Kaylor, Jake, She Was Lost, Marcus Arnold, Connor. Jeffrey, Zetsk, and Bjorn Kindler for being amazing patrons and members. Follow me on Instagram at ojang, subscribe, share, hit the bell, hit the yoga mat, do some stretches. Let's go. So I have this model from 3dscans.com and the same exact scene and kernel settings as the previous SSS tutorials, so check them out to see that. Let's add a universal material, the RDF mode to GGX, I set Beckman, but it doesn't really matter. Albedo to black, metallicness to zero, very low roughness, so 0 0.09 or so. IWAR at 1.51, which is about right for porcelain. Transmission all the way up with specular type. Turn on fake shadows, and let's add a random walk medium. Set density pretty high, so around 1500, depends on your model scale. And let's add two octane noises and a mix node. We'll set the projection on both to XYZ to UVW. And let's add an RGB spectrum as well. Now let's plug one noise to texture two, the other noise to amount, and the RGB node to texture one, and the mix node to the albedo channel. The top noise we'll use to kind of fake those tiny fractures that sometimes happen to porcelain materials. So let's set its type to chips, up the contrast a whole lot, and scale it down till we get these tiny pieces. Now we need to play with the gamma, but let's zoom in to see what's going on. And if we bring down the gamma, we start to get these tiny lines around the chips. Now we can micro adjust the settings to get a look we like. We want to keep the contrast high and we don't want to break the lines too much. Now the bottom noise we'll use to get the small color variation porcelain sometimes gets. So let's add a gradient node to the noise and let's scale it way, way down. And let's solo it so we can see better. And we can scale it much more and just play with the settings to match that porcelain noise. Let's add colors to the gradient. So we'll pick different shades and tints of this kind of blue green color. We want to go from very dark to very light. And then we can play with the noise gamma and the placement of the notes to shift between a darker or a lighter overall tone. And let's bring the scale down even more by a little bit and also bring the contrast way down. We want all the shades to appear. Now if we solo the mix node, we can see the combination of both. So let's change the RGB node, which is the color of the fractures, to a lighter tint of the same overall color we have. Maybe reduce the contrast on the fracture noise. And let's zoom out and see how it looks. Looks cool. And I want to get a darker tone of the color, so I'll change the gamma till I'm satisfied with the tone. And if we unsolo the node, that looks pretty dope. We're almost there. Let's add a subtle detail to help sell the look. So we'll add a dirt node and plug it into the albedo channel. Let's solo it, check invert normal to get the black color on the edges of the model, up the strength and reduce the radius a little bit, and that also depends on your model scale. Now let's add a gradient node to it, and let's solo it and change the black to a very dark yellow color and the white to black. And if we look at it, maybe we can brighten the yellow a little bit. The brighter it is, the less transmission will occur on the edges. Nice, that adds this weird discoloration that sometimes happens on the edges of older porcelain. Maybe even stronger yellow to get a more pronounced effect. Yeah, that's it. And we can add the fracture noise to the rotation channel and adjust the anisotropy to your likings. That will barely do anything, but it might add a slight extra detail to the fractures when you move around with the camera. And I'll just make the color noise a bit brighter. And there's one last detail that I'm going to add. I was looking for a way to make the cracks look more realistic. And when you examine real cracked glass or porcelain, you kind of realize that wherever the crack forms, the object becomes less transparent. So it kind of gets darker and only then it gets lighter around the actual cracks. So an easy way to do that is to plug our crack noise into the transmission channel. And you can see how it looks. Then add a gradient node, then make the black about 50% gray. So it's only semi-transparent and then crank the white node way to the left. So it's as you can see, the cracks become thinner and lighter. Now there's these tiny slits that are semi-transparent inside thicker slits that are just bright color. And that really adds a lot in my opinion. You can really see that extra detail in the cracks that affects the transparency and doesn't just feel like a colored pattern. And I'm done. So there you go. It's not a thousand percent realistic, but it gets pretty damn close. It's pretty simple, but has enough details to sell it and it looks beautiful. And you can get this material as well as many others on my SSS pack. Go check it out if you feel like it. That's it. I love you. Have a good day. Peace.